Amnesia The Dark Descent released for Windows and other operating systems back in 2010. It was a first person adventure horror game and made its way towards the top of many a scariest game list upon its release. It received an expansion named Justine and a sequel called A Machine for Pigs in the subsequent years. The Amnesia Collection compiles all three of these games and released on the Nintendo eShop a few weeks back. Are they as scary as legend would have you believe? Well, I'm Glenn for Switch Up. Thank you to the developers for the review copy. And now, let's find out. <laughs> Amnesia The Dark Descent takes place in the 19th century as you assume the role of a man named Daniel. You wake up in a mysterious castle suffering from the titular amnesia and in possession of a note Daniel has written to himself telling him that he must make his way down into the depths of the castle and kill the Baron Alexander of Brennenburg and that he is being followed by a mysterious shadow. As you play details of Daniel's past and that of the castles are shown through flashbacks and through notes and journals that you discover and the story takes some pretty dark turns before its conclusion. The action for all three games takes place from a first person perspective. You move using the left stick and control the camera with the right. For the most part the castle is shrouded in darkness and staying in the dark for too long will begin to affect Daniel's sanity. This decrease in sanity will manifest itself on screen by way of Daniel's view beginning to blur, distorting the screen and it will also cause hallucinations at times. To counteract this you must try and stay in better lit areas of the castle as best as you can, using the natural light of the windows or the few lit candles you come across as you journey on. To assist you further you will find tinder boxes that can then be used to light the candles scattered around the castle on a variety of candelabra and will also acquire a lantern early on that can be fueled with oil should you find it. Both tinder boxes and lantern oil are in scant supply initially, although I never found myself in danger of running out, but having said that I was quite conservative with my use of them just in case. The main gameplay mechanic revolves around solving a variety of puzzles in order that you can progress further into the castle. You have the traditional puzzles whereby you find an item, store it in your inventory and use it at the correct time, sometimes needing to combine items too. You will need to pay attention to the notes and journals you find as they will give you hints and clues as to how to solve some of these puzzles or where it is you need to go next to find an item or progress the story. Your character will write mementos as you go which serve as guides as to what it is you are attempting to do next. As well as these puzzles you will also have environmental puzzles. These aren't necessarily as signposted, it's more about looking at what's around you and thinking how it could be used to your advantage. Most objects you find scattered around from ornaments to boxes to rubble can be picked up by pressing and holding ZR whilst they are highlighted. You can rotate and observe them and drop them by releasing ZR. You can even throw them by pressing the L button. This will sometimes be essential to the gameplay as you will need to break through certain barriers or reach high areas whilst just using what's at hand. In fact you probably need the objects you find scattered about just as much as you need the key items that get added to your inventory. I really enjoyed this aspect of the game, having to use your wits and think outside the box and I can't think of many other games that use this mechanic quite so well. It's not just a case of items conveniently being left around, it feels intuitive as if that's what you would do in such a situation. There was only one of these environmental puzzles that I became stuck on for any length of time and even then the game gave me a visual clue to be fair, I just didn't pick up on it. Solving these puzzles is another way that you can restore your sanity meter. Your current state of mind can be monitored in the inventory screen, your health can also be checked in the same screen. As the game goes on you will begin to encounter enemies and looking at them for too long will again cause Daniel's sanity to drop. You cannot defend yourself and you will need to stay in the shadows at these times. Crouching will also help you stay out of sight and if you have your lantern on put it out straight away. If you are spotted then be prepared to run and hide as one or two hits and you are dead. You open doors and drawers by holding the ZR button on them and then either pushing the right stick up or pulling it down depending on which way you want them to move. What this means is that you can choose to open a door slightly and peek inside a room or burst it open quickly because you are running away. Hiding in a cupboard and just edging the door forward slightly to see if the coast is clear is equally nerve wracking and fun. There is no map in the game and whilst this isn't a huge issue early on as generally you are led to where you need to go, it does prolong the game unnecessarily towards the end. I never found myself completely lost I must say, but as you are starting to do a bit of backtracking towards the end it just would have made things slightly less cumbersome. 
Control wise things are fine for the most part, although trying to move your cursor onto an item to pick it up can be a little bit awkward. You can change the sensitivity in the options menu, but it's still never quite right and a lack of motion controls is disappointing as this would have helped with this issue. It's never a major problem, it just feels quite stiff and the lack of a mouse is sorely felt at these times. Some of the game's mechanics haven't aged well, such as having to carry certain items to a destination, having to put them down whenever a door needs opening, pick them back up, do it again at the next door, etc. These are mild annoyances at worst, but they do start to evoke feelings of tedium, which is not something you should be feeling when dealing with horror. Amnesia Justine is an expansion pack that plays very similarly to the original with a couple of differences. The main one is that if you die in this version, you must start again from the very beginning. As you play, you will encounter characters in danger and can choose to help them or leave them. The game is much shorter than the original, being just an expansion, and you can be finished in an hour, although this time will depend on how cautiously you play, how quick you are to solve the puzzles, and how many times you need to start over again. Your actions in the game will determine which ending you receive. Amnesia A Machine for Pigs is an indirect sequel to The Dark Descent, taking place in a different time frame with a new cast of characters while still being set in the same universe. This is the most different of the three, although again a lot of the mechanics do work in the same way. The biggest differences are the removal of the inventory system, there no longer being a need to hunt down tinderboxes or lantern oil, as your lantern never drains, and the removal of the sanity meter. Should you become injured, your health now replenishes over time, negating the need for the health potions used in the first game. Due to the loss of an inventory, there is a much heavier emphasis on the environmental puzzles of the first game, and the setting does not feel as confined as its predecessor. I quite like the fact that the two games were slightly different to each other, and if I were to make a comparison to horror games already on the Switch, to give a bit of context, I would say that The Dark Descent plays a bit more like Outlast, whereas A Machine for Pigs is a bit more like Layers of Fear. The gameplay does a good job of balancing slow paced suspense with white knuckle tension and although some of the gameplay tropes haven't aged brilliantly it's still fun and scores 16 out of 20. Controls are fine for general movement but a little more fiddly when trying to interact with smaller objects and score 14 out of 20. Visually, Amnesia has quite an old school look to it. From the menus and pointers down to the icons and objects, I get the impression that the developers were inspired by adventure games from the 90s when making this back in 2010. The castle itself looks pretty standard initially, a bit like Hogwarts after one of those legendary Hufflepuff parties, but as you venture on, it's not so much about what the building looks like anymore, to be fair it's shrouded in darkness and mist for a large chunk of your playtime, it's more about how the world is interpreted through your character's eyes, as he slips further into the mouth of madness. This is presented by a distortion of the screen, but it goes past this as your controls begin to feel heavier, as if every step is an effort, but conversely your camera seems to loosen up, as if your mind is racing. This is all handled with much more subtlety than I am giving it credit for, but it's definitely effective. Although a machine for pigs has removed the sanity meter, any story event or set piece is met with a slow-mo technique and similar blurring to the screen, although it's more subtle than in The Dark Descent, to the point that I thought it was frame rate drops at first. Talking of this, I did encounter a couple of examples of frame drops in the first game, but it kept fairly consistent for the most part. There were also a couple of graphical glitches, such as enemies getting stuck in an animation loop. Audio wise, this was the part of the game that really resonated with me. The constant clicking or crunching noise, the incessant droning, it's very difficult to explain. The noises get under your skin, they make you itch. You will never know what the noises are, you never identify them, and therefore you never feel at ease. When a door creaks, it happens, your hairs stand on end, then you realise what the noise is, and you calm down. There's never that moment of realisation here, and it's very effective at what it does. Voice acting has its moments between games, some is very good, some is incredibly cheesy, but to be fair it's never awful. Visuals look a little dated, especially character models, but as a visual experience it's effective at what it does, and it scores 14 out of 20. Audio for me surpassed the visuals in Unsettling Me, and it scores 17 out of 20. The Amnesia Collection costs £25.29 or $29 or Euros 99 and for this price you are getting the original game, which took me about 8 hours to finish, the Justine expansion, and the sequel, A Machine for Pigs, which again is around 6-8 to eight hours long. 
The two full games are different enough that it doesn't feel a slog playing them in close proximity to each other, and even Justine has the die and you start again trope to make it stand out from the others, and value scores 16 out of 20. To conclude, the Amnesia Collection joins a respectable and growing list of first person horror adventure games on the Switch. You will feel unsettled whilst playing, perhaps even feel pangs of fear, especially early game, although this does dissipate somewhat once the game has shown its hand, but this is common amongst horror films and games alike, and certainly not exclusive to this series. Amnesia Collection gets a switch up score of 77%. Many thanks as always everybody for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, please do remember to leave a like if you did. A quick thank you as always to our Patreons for your continued support, you really do make this possible. And thank you to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.